today I'm going to work on the Farbenspiel trilobite, I hope I'm saying that right, by Nicola. Um, so this is the first time I've made this one as well. So we're going to take this off the jig here. So there's a couple things I need to know so I can make this. I need to know how thick it is and I need to know how much paracord I'm going to need. So for my thickness I'm going to take my digital calipers here and we're going to take a couple measurements different spots 3.42 I'm going to write these down as we go 3, 4, 2, 3, 2, 3, 4, 0, and I'm going to go diagonally here. Three two seven. I just want to get as many different samples as I can. Three, four, or five. Just to kind of get a nice average. The more samples I have, when I average them out, I'm going to add all those together and then divide it by the number of samples. Gives me a bit better average thickness to figure out the length I need to make this on my jig. Okay. Um, the next thing I'm going to do now is I'm going to mark all of these ends with tape and then we're going to make an mark an inch and peel it back and see how much how much cord it takes um, this one doesn't have to be four colors but that's kind of the advantage of this design as you can do the four colors and again these are just my practice some scrap cords I had so Hopefully it'll end up, it actually ends up kind of, <laughs> for random bits of scrap, doesn't look too bad. But, let's mark this. I think I've well, let's get this done first here okay so I have all four of my ends got tape on them um, I think I've mentioned this before this is just how I do this if I've never done a weave before kind of tells me how much cord I need and 
I'm a big believer in the formula to figure out the size. Uh, you don't have to do it this way, but I'm the one making the video. This is how I do it. And I wish somebody would have passed this. A lot of this stuff I've found trial and error, so if somebody would have passed this along to me when I first started out, I'd have been indeed grateful. I'm just going to peel this apart now. So now you can see I've undone about an inch. I've got my marks on my cord. Uh, they're pretty much even. I'm going to probably use the same amount for each color. But it looks like we've got four inches per inch per color of cord. So I'm going to write that down. Four inches per inch. I'm going to go figure out my colors, figure out my thickness average, and I'll get some cords cut and pick this up when I get back. Okay, so I took my measurements and I averaged them out and I get a measurement of 0 0.345. I'm making this for an 8 inch wrist. So we're going to take 8 and we're going to add to it pi times my 0 0.345. And it comes out 9.08 or something like that. So I've decided I'm going to go 9 and an 8. Just to have a little bit of extra. So I took my 4 inches per inch. I'm going to give myself a little bit of wiggle room and we'll go 4.5. So that's... 41 inches per color and then my core is going to be 9 and an eighth by 4 because I need a 4 strand core on this so I need 36.5 so one of my cords needs to be 77 and a half inches the other three will be the 41. Um, again I went and purchased some cord so some of my cord this gray and this one uh, orange you happy are 10 feet and we'll measure when we get done and see how much is left over and double check my numbers there but I think we should be good so I've got orange you happy and zombie corrosion on one strand and I've got this gray and white and you're going to want to connect these cords um, there it is you can use any method you want. If you want to melt them together, melt them together. This is the Manny method. Uh, there's plenty, a couple videos online show you how to do that. So I'm not going to go through that because it takes plenty of time. So what I'm going to do now is the way I'm going to put this on my jig is going to be a little differently than I've done it before. It's still going to end up with the two cow hitch attachment. It's just going to look slightly different. Because what I want is I want this white. Hold on just a second here. I want the white to go down through the buckle. 
and basically I want my splice right there as close as I can get it to that end of my jig. So now I need to set my jig up. Um, let's double check. Make sure we're zeroed out here. And let's see, I've got a little bit of a space, so I want to tighten this buckle up. Sometimes they move when you're making the bracelet. I want to make sure that I'm, right now I'm dead zero. There's no play, so I can feel pretty confident that when I set my jig to nine and an eighth there, that it's going to be right where I want it. I'm going to buckle zeroed out. So now I'm going to have that right there at the female end of the buckle. I'm going to do a cow's hitch down here. For my other buckle attachment. Kind of reverse engineering my attachment here. Okay, so I'm going to come to the outside, cross over the core, and go back up and through this loop that I'm creating. Single cow's hitch on this end. Let me see if I can back that out. So now I'm going to take this cord, and this time I'm going to go from the bottom up. over on my cow's hitch to be on the bottom. So I've gone from the bottom up. I'm going to go between these two cords and go over here. And then I'm going to go from the top down and through this loop that I've created on the back side. So now we need to make sure we're tight. I'm just going to hold that in place right there. And so now I've made a cow's hitch just like before when I would do the double cow's hitch. Come back down to this end. Do another cow's hitch from the top down through the center between the cords here. Make sure we take out any twists and turns. twists and turns you have in there. We're going to go over the top. Take this out. Squish everything to the side. And bring my cord from the back. There we 
go. And pull that through the loop. Make sure we get out any twists that are coming up. And just like we did with the white cord, we're going to come over to this side and go from the top down. And that was the long way around it, but we've got a double, double cow's hitch on one end. Just a single cow's hitch with two cords on the other end. And we're ready to start our bracelet. Okay, we've got a double cow's hitch on one end, and our single cow's hitch on the other end with our two working ends coming out. Uh, next thing I need to do now is get my second color through here so I'm again just going to use my little tiny hemostats that I've got here uh, you can use needle nose pliers you could put a lacing needle on there if you wanted we just need to get our cord between the buckle and this part of our single cow's hitch right there. sure everything's still nice and snug and what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull this cord through until my point of attachment and I should have done that while that was still a little loose let's loosen that up get my point of attachment right in the middle we don't want anybody to see that um, whether you've melted cords together or you did like I did do the Manny method we're gonna hide it nobody will ever know okay I have my double cow hitch on the one end I've got my single cows hitch with the two cords running through the back from the front to the back my secondary color in place I'm going to take these top colors, the ones I hit my core with. I'm going to take the left cord, go under, out the center, and over. Make a loop. Okay. My right cord here, I'm going to go over the white, under, out the center, above the white. And then I'm going to go through this white loop. So we should have just a regular old overhand knot here. We're going to tighten that up. Kind of the first go around, we got to work it around our splice there. Get that up there. Make it look good. Make sure we're looking fine. Okay, and then we're going to do the same thing with the second set of colors. Under the core, through the middle, and out. 
going to go over that cord, under the core, through the middle, and then through that loop. And we've got a knot. The dangers of running it 10 feet instead of cutting it. But I, when I have my scrap, I'm going to repurpose this cord for something, so I want to have as much scrap as I can. Okay, and we just simply to keep tightening things up, push that up, and we're going to repeat that pattern. We're going to take this cord on the left, under the core, through the center, and out. Take the right core over everything. Through the center. And through that loop. And pull it all tight. This is one of the another one of those. You want it tight enough, but not too tight. Tight, snug. We don't want to deform the side edges here. We just want to make it go tight enough. All right. So we go over the white cord here, under the center, out the middle, and out. cords, under the core, out the center, out my loop. Pull everything tight. Push it up snug. And repeat the process. Over the gray, through the center of the core, and over. Over both cords, under the center, and out through my loop. Okay, so we've continued down. I'm almost to the end here, but we're going to finish. Um, this is the point where it's going to start getting a little more tough to feed the cord through. And we're going to utilize some hemostats here, pliers. or lacing needles. Um, I have those, but and we may get them out here in a minute to finish the bracelet completely, but this is just to show that you don't need those. You can use needle nose pliers. Whatever you got handy.
off the jig. We're just going to kind of work it up, make sure everything's tight. And I think we're pretty close to being there. Um, I'm going to probably put one more stitch in here. And just do it off the jig. Tighten things up a little bit. So all I'm doing is sticking that through the center of the core. I'm grabbing my cord. I want it through. Just to get that last stitch on there. Let's check it out size wise. Again, uh, this is for somebody whose wrist is slightly larger than mine. About an eighth of an inch is all. So if we get this together single handedly here. There we go. And I've got. Pretty good gappage. I think that's alright. Um, I need to charge my camera. I didn't realize the battery's dead. I'm going to do that and I'm going to get my lacing needles and we'll tuck these ends in the back and finish this off and be done with this in just a minute. I'll be back. Okay, we've got this completed. Now I want to take these cords and tuck them in four or five rows on the back side here. Just so that we're not burning the ends here. out any twists before you tuck that. Okay, now I'm going to take this white, do the same thing, four or five rows here. Oh. Close to that, I can. So there's my scrap on the pieces that I cut. Um, as you can see, I added a half inch to my measurement, which gives me four inches. So it was a good thing I did that. I probably would have. Just barely had enough cord the other way, which is kind of the goal to not have too much left over, but I want to have enough to finish the bracelet, so I'd rather have a little bit extra. Alright, let's get this out of the way, and we'll do this orange one next. Same thing as the other side, we're just going to tuck it four or 
five chords here. And then again with the gray. And same as before, we're just going to cut that right as close to there as we can get. That's all there is to it. Now all we got left is take a fancy picture, call it a day. If you have any questions, I need to fix that. Kind of a cool design. Uh, if you have any questions, comments, just leave them below. And good luck.